Welcome back, everybody. Time for us to go behind the headlines. It's just about 13 after, and I saw a headline that came up. Uh, this was from the TechCrunch blog, and the headline was, The DEA Seized Bitcoins in a Silk Road Drug Raid. Now, if uh, if some of those terms don't make much sense to you, let me uh, just kind of give you the, the primer here on some of these terminologies. As has been throughout history, whenever there's prohibition, people find ways to get their product to market, get their thing distributed. And in the Internet era, we have such ways. Uh, they're anonymous, um, underground, encrypted ways of being able to do all sorts of transactions, some of which happen to be drugs. Uh, now, the leading area where people go to this is something called the Silk Road, which is a allusion to the the old Silk Road, the actual Silk Road between China and Europe, where you know spices were traded and such, uh, opium and all sorts of things. So uh, it's named after that. But the Silk Road is basically a, an internet marketplace for drugs and probably all sorts of other stuff. But we'll just stick to drugs for right now. And part of how this works is through a series of encryptions, and that's a thing called a Tor network, T-O-R. And the Tor network is just kind of a, I don't know, like a shell or a redistributor. It just kind of masks who you are, anonymously shuffles your uh, packets of information on the Internet through other uh, encrypted servers so nobody can track who you are or what you're doing. At least that's what the promise is. Now, I've always been of the... Uh, cynical nature that anything digital can be hacked and probably is. And I'm also of the cynical nature that the DA has got a whole bunch of money to pay all sorts of hackers that they catch for all sorts of other things to try to hack into things like Silk Road. So that caught my eye when I heard that there was a, a seizure in a Silk Road drug raid. Like, okay, now they're starting to catch on as to how these internet transactions are going on. Now, the other part of this story is Bitcoins, and this is where the, the seizure is is kind of new. There's been prosecutions before with respect to people doing transactions online, internet transactions, online pharmacies, even some Silk Road stuff. But the Bitcoin thing is new. Now, for those of you who don't know exactly what Bitcoin is, Bitcoin is an online currency. And it's uh, stateless. And it's bankless. It's basically people, uh, it's, it's like an open source money if you want to call it that. And and people have these uh, Bitcoins that they get, which is just a, really a, a digital token, a, a string of uh, encrypted zeros and ones, really, that identify these coins. And these coins uh, don't think, I, I hate the term Bitcoin because it makes it sound like it's not worth very much. One Bitcoin can be worth hundreds of dollars, right? They're traded in the hundredths or even the thousandths sometimes out there, right? And and their their value is constantly changing. Uh, based on how many people are hoarding them, owning them, trading them. It's really phenomenally in interesting uh, from a numismatic point of view. But uh, don't want to go too deep into that. Le just, let's just say here that Bitcoins are an online currency. They're an online electronic currency that have no a real cash equivalent in the real world. Although you can cash them in for cash. And that's how a lot of these online anonymous encrypted transactions are working. So this was the story coming out of TechCrunch. And it was a notification that on June 23rd, the DEA had, uh, they posted uh, one of their forfeiture notices. You know, we've, we've talked a lot on this show about civil asset forfeiture. You can get caught for drugs or whatever, and they charge your money with a crime. And then they take it. And then you have to prove that your money wasn't illegal by hiring a lawyer with the money that they've got sitting on, right? But we've talked about asset forfeiture before. This is the first case we can find, though, where they used asset forfeiture to seize Bitcoins. The standard forfeiture notice note, uh, announced that it had seized 11.02 Bitcoins from a Silk Road user named Eric Daniel Hughes, a.k.a. Casey Jones, after charging him with the intent to distribute drugs. The notification notes a BTC wallet account number and the price, which at the time the 11.02 Bitcoins were valued at $814.22. And the little note here, 13 DEA 581051 11.02 Bitcoins, account number, blah, 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 big long series of alphanumeric code, uh, $814.22, which was seized in Charleston, South Carolina from Eric Daniel Hughes. Now, first of all, the, the, the first thing about that is the DEA has a Bitcoin account. 
Because to be able to seize those funds, those Bitcoins, it's not like you go to the ATM and you punch in your card and it kicks out $814.22. The DEA has to have its own Bitcoin account. So here we've got government, a government agency adding legitimacy to the uh, emerging market of Bitcoins. Because there's still some question in a lot of places, you know, some governments don't like the idea of this open source kind of currency. They like to control money, right? So the DEA's got a Bitcoin account. That's pretty amazing. But the other thing is how did they know he had a Bitcoin account? All these things are supposed to be anonymous. They're supposed to be encrypted when they're doing tours and all this. So how did they discover this guy's stash? Uh, TechCrunch uh, points it out that... Uh, uh, this does this mean it says while the seizure of cash isn't unusual in itself, it is definitely the first time Bitcoin users have seen a significant chunk of the cryptocurrency disappear into a government evidence book. And uh, now it could be just old fashioned sleuthing. They did find that this guy was kind of incautious. He didn't use any uh, drop addresses. He was using his own personal address online. So you know, they caught one of the dumb ones. I, I don't know if this is this spells doom for everyone out there using Silk Road, Tor, and Bitcoin and all of that. But this is pretty fascinating that they've got their own account uh, and and they're and they're able to tap into what's going on here in these uh, Silk Road networks. Uh, there's a website also, Let's Talk Bitcoin, that had a lot to say about this, uh, where they were pointing out uh, that the Bitcoin uh, the the scenario that they're talking about is uh, one where U.S authorities set up uh, what they call a honeypot account to attract uh, this money to come in here. And uh, there's another uh, 17.24 Bitcoin transaction that was transferred in and out of their, uh, of their DEA account. And they go into great data here in this uh, let's, let's talk Bitcoin.com onto how this DEA uh, consolidation is working. There's uh, all sorts of information you can read here. I'll put, I'll post the uh, let's talk Bitcoin.com. On, onto our chat room and also techcrunch.com if you'd like to read more about it. You can donate to us in Bitcoins, or can you? I don't know. I don't think they can yet. I, I don't know. What not do you got to do for that, Brian? I don't know if I want to look into it. <laughs> yeah, not anymore. 